Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi, both of you. And both of you are wearing red as well. How nice. Oh, we have Pushpa, Isaac, and so many of them together. Thank you, Timothy. So we'll begin now. Roses are red, violets are blue. Love is in the air. Can you feel it too? Good evening, Solai. It's that time of the year again when flowers look prettier, music sounds sweeter, and even despicable teddy bears look so adorable. Are you talking about spring? It's February 14th. So? It's Valentine's Day. The only day flowers are as expensive as silver. And a real bear would probably be more affordable than this. How boring. I'm not boring. I'm being practical. Roses are red. Violets are blue. An egg roll is cheaper than a dinner for two. Well, that will take some time to turn your perspective around. Till then, we have Sophia with something enjoyable in store for us. So get ready for some fun and excitement. Over to you, Sophia. Good evening, everyone. So good to see each one of you. We'll be playing a game, so I'll be sharing my screen. You're not supposed to unmute yourself, but you're supposed to type it in the chat box. So rename your device to your name. 
So I can figure out figure it out who has written it first. These are the Disney princesses. You have to guess the princesses by looking at the prince. The first one. Yes, let's see who is the first one to write it in the chat box. Oh, oh, oh. That's correct. That's Rapunzel and Flynn. So I'm trying to figure it out who's written it first. And I think it is Josiah Matthew. Wow. The second one. Very easy. Let's see who's the first one. Yes, I think that's Jessica Akka. Yes, it's Jasmine and Aladdin. Good, the third one. That's Anna and Christoph. Oh, oh, I can't keep the track who's writing first. Good job. Next one. Jessica writes, Frozen Wali Choti Behen. <laughs> okay, Ria writes, okay. Correct, Ria, that's Bele and Prince Adam from Beauty and the Beast. The next one, the most, okay, I must not say this. Let's see. Yes, who's AG Sec? I think I'm sure that is Zuleka. <laughs> yes, you're correct, Zuleka, that's Cinderella and Prince Charming. The next one. Josiah says Snow White. Let's see whether he's got it correct. Yes, Josiah, Snow White and Prince Florian. The last one. AG Sec writes Sleeping Beauty. Cinderella part two. Okay, let's see. That's Princess Aurora and Prince Philip. Oh, and there. Now let's get into couples in the Bible. So I'll show you a picture. It may be a scene or it may be the character. So you just have to guess who are the couples. The first one. Come on. Yes, that's correct, Dwayne, Mary and Joseph. Okay, next one. Correct, Dwayne, <laughs> Adam and Eve. Okay, the next one. Hmm, let's see who gets this one first. Samson and Delilah. Yes, correct. Samson and Delilah. The next one. Someone has written Dalai Laila. <laughs> okay. I think Dwayne got it correct. Yes, that's Queen Nesta. Okay, the next one. Good, Josiah, Ruth, and Boaz. Excellent. And the next one. Okay, I think Dwayne Anna has got it correct. That's Abraham and Sarah. Good. And the next one. Correct, Dwayne. I have written a Job and Mrs. Job. <laughs> Correct. 
Good job to each one of you. Over to you, Rebecca and Joy. Wow, that was some fun. Thank you so much, Sophia, for leading us in that game. And thanks for not putting King Solomon on that list. Otherwise, we would be here all night. Why are you so starky all the time? Why can't you just be positive? Well, I thought positive is the most negative word these days. Uh oh Let's move on now from COVID to Cupid. So friends, out of 365 days in a year, the time when people choose to celebrate love is on Valentine's Day. During this time of the year, people go all out to express their feelings for that special person hoping to find true love. Despite all that, Valentine's Day remains a meaningless day for many people because love should not be celebrated one day out of the year. Everyone knows that it takes more than one day to love a person. Wait, hold on. Which script are you reading from? Um, the anthology of singlehood. Oh, I know what you just need. Here you go. A love potion. Well, that's right. Will this even work? Well, today it will. So all you lovely people out there, whether single, married, broken up, or ready to mingle, we welcome you to our Valentine's Day special celebration themed the love, love portion. portion. So sit back and enjoy the rest of the evening as we have the Marandi siblings who will lead us in the time of song and worship. Yes, over to you, the Marandi siblings. Thank you so much. Uh, a very good evening to all of you. If you can hear me, just give me a thumbs up so I can know my system's working. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, let us sing some songs. If you know, clap along, sing along. Yes. Yeah. 
fullness of your grace is you with me the richness of your beauty is all I see the brightness of your glory has arrived in your presence God I'm completely satisfied for you I sing I dance rejoice in this divine romance lift my heart and my hands to show my love to show my She loves me. She loves me not. She loves me. She loves me not. Looks like the love potion is working. It's better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. Wow. That was some deep stuff. Well, moving on to our next segment. And this is very special because it features some of our TREG members representing the TREG groups all over the city. And they have given their take on love. So sit back, enjoy the segment, and don't go anywhere. Uh, 
so love according to me is like a combination of many things uh, most important of those things is obviously action yaar dosti hai love is a feeling i think it is one of the most pure core emotions that we cling on to love is one of the few things in this world that money cannot buy it's simple it's a one word answer for me food man like for a single person love is food food is love like itna hi simple hai what a google it sure okay it's too long it's complicated uh i think when you're in love you just can't stop thinking about that person jab raat ko neend aana band kar de you know when you are in love when there's one particular person who hits a very different nerve in you which others cannot for me when you know when you're in love if you see a part of you if not yourself in the other person yeah like jab kuch kuch hota hai i think you smile every time you think about them and you think about them a lot so you just smile like all the time how do you know that this next question romeo and juliet well definitely not romeo and juliet because like they both died but like if you're looking at the bible maybe like jacob and rachel But then I feel really sad for Leah. Yeah. So like all love stories are sad. I think it's the Obamas. They are absolutely the most adorable couples that I think I can think of. Okay, I like the love story between Cooper Murphy and Brad. Uh, it's the characters in from Insta- Interstellar. I would say Bajina Mastani. Who could forget those two? I mean, like honestly, in this real world. My mom dad ka pyar has always inspired me. Okay, um I'm going to say Jesus because you know so many girls wait for a man to come and save them but let's face it girls a man did save you 2000 years ago and I always say this so uh you know that's the man you should be going to go to Jesus. The quality that attracts me the most in a person is intelligence. I would also like to say the three H's: honesty, humility, and hygiene. Uh, but above all, the person should be a believer in Christ. I think they should be a little chill, carefree, not too serious in life. Uh, I mean, should have should be serious in some ways, but like not like super serious, you know. <laughs> like should be able to have fun. That person should be a fun lover and adventurer. First off, you have to be like six feet tall. No, be like you need to be like kind. I mean, kindness, generosity, honesty, con- be a considerate person. That's something. But like, you also have to be like six feet tall. Yeah, I mean, like look smart too. I don't think there should be prerequisites, but I think a sense of humor can always be a plus point for someone. Uh, if someone really does even the smallest of things like you know i mean big thing matters of course but if someone really does something like you know from their heart even the smallest of things that really touches me so yeah that is really attractive a woman with a purpose is definitely attractive uh yeah sure i think i'm going to sleep no plans no since godzilla was his kong is coming out I might also watch Godzilla on Amazon Prime or something. On Valentine's Day, I'm going to spend time at home with my dog and my other loved ones. I'm going to do what I usually do on any other day because I don't need just Valentine's Day or a particular day of the year to celebrate love for my loved ones. I do it every day. हम एक बार जीते हैं एक बार मरते हैं शादी एक बार होती है और प्यार प्यार भी एक ही बार होता है डिड यू फिनिश द होल थिंग डू यू थिंक ट्रू लव हैपेंस ओनली वंस वेल वंस अ मंथ 
or once a week? I'm serious. Well, I think that's a myth, Joy. Well, then it's high time we bust some of these filmy myths. And that brings us to our very interesting next segment called The Mythbusters. And we have Mini with us, who is going to lead us in this segment. Over to you, Mini. Good evening, everyone. Someone, somewhere, is just made for you. Love is about finding the missing one, the person who will complete you. I think all of us at one point of our time in our life's journey, we build a kind of wish list of the qualities that we want to see in our better halves. Isn't that true? The way he or she should be, the way he or she should not be, the way our life will be together and the magical ways life will turn into a fairy tale once we are together. Well, all this, uh, I think, happens in a... Uh, when we see fairy tale movies, right? And we read books on fairy tales. But in real life, things are a little different. And it could be a real eye-opener. So in this segment, we are going to talk about a few love myths. And then we have our friends who are going to burst these myths for us. Are there any relationships without any conflict? Is it okay to have a conflict in a relationship? With this, let us talk about our first love myth. Conflict is a sign that you are in a wrong relationship. Conflict is a sign that you are in a wrong relationship. So friends, we will have a poll launched at this time. You will see it on your screen. And I want all of us to share your views, your opinions on this. You will see two options on your screen, yes and no. So whatever you think uh, and your viewpoint is on this, I'll request you to select. Don't worry, we will not see what you are, uh, which option you are selecting. It's anonymous. So I request all of us to participate in this. And I guess all of us are giving our votes, right? Yes. Yes, please get going. Till we have the results. Wonderful. I hope all of us are selecting right either yes or no. Oh, we got our results. Okay, so uh, we have 72% who says no and 28% of us who say say yes right and so 72 says conflict is a sign that you're in a wrong relationship for this particular myth we have 72 percentage of people saying no and 28 saying yes uh, thank you for your response and thank you for your participation so for this particular myth uh, we have auntie Sheila with us who will burst this myth for us, an amazing, a beautiful uh, person. She will share her opinion with us this evening. So, Auntie Sheila, over to you. <clears throat> thank you, Mini, and uh, thank you so much for uh, having me uh, here this evening. It's a joy to be here and to share in the uh, special love potion uh, special uh, with all of you young friends. Conflict is a sign that you are in a wrong relationship. Very interesting. And I'm also very interested by the poll that uh, uh, the, the response to the poll that was taken. So I think we are in good company. And um, uh, so let me just try and say uh, what I need, what I need, what I have been requested to speak about. Uh, what exactly do we mean by conflict? Uh, when God created man and woman, he created them unique and he created them different. He created man 
and women with unique gift and abilities. He created them with unique emotional strengths and expressions. But he also created man and woman with the ability to love each other and the ability to care for one another. But he also created us with the ability to think. Think differently, but also similarly. So it is safe to say that wherever two people are together, uh, say two men who are stuck in a lift or two women who are locked in a room or maybe a man and woman together, um, uh, no matter how loving and care caring they may be in their own rights, if left together for even a few minutes, sooner or later, there is going to be disagreement. It is just a natural occurrence and in the scheme of life. Uh, I'm just looking at this group that is there with, I think that's maybe in Pushpa's, uh, 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 Pushpa and there's a whole group of them. I'm just wondering how, how um, peacefully their afternoon has gone, whether there was some kind of, uh, you know, a minor disagreement and they're laughing. So I'm thinking there must have been some, some um, discussion or difference of opinion. But am I saying that um, disagreement, uh, it, when, we, when you think about dis disagreement, is it really called conflict? Well, let's try and understand this, okay? Disagreement is a lack of consensus or, you know, of agreement. Uh, sometimes it can be a quarrel or an argument or some, dis uh, you know, divisiveness. So we can very safely say that a disagreement is a type of conflict, either between people or ideas. We can often, some will say, no, it is not. Yes, it is. That becomes an argument. If your opinion contradicts the facts, there is bound to be a disagreement. But a conflict is deeper and more long lasting than a disagreement. A conflict is a deeper disagreement involving layers of emotions, some of which may go unrecognized by the people involved. So let me say that wherever there are two or more people or in any relationship, even like in a family or among friends, there is bound to be disagreement, which if it is continuous, could lead to conflict in that relationship. Well, before coming, uh, well, coming to this, you know, the special relationship uh, before marriage, uh, tonight, this evening is Valentine's Day and it is, uh, oh, love is in the air and love potion and all kinds of love, love, love things. Uh, but I like somebody's comment when they said that um, uh, Valentine's Day is every day, you know, it doesn't have to be only celebrated on this one particular day. But it is for those maybe who um, do not celebrate it every day that at least Valentine's Day is special for them. Well, anyway, coming to the relationship before marriage, girl meets boy and from then onwards oh, I just can't live without her I can't live without him that's the general uh, you know feeling but then as we get to know one another and spend time together we find that the other person is really not as I thought he or she is you know we talk and we tell others maybe that oh he's so stingy I gave him so many gifts for valentine's today and do you know what he gave me just one measly rose. Or he is too protective. Or you may say that he is too um, uh, possessive. And every time you get in, you meet, you get into an argument, one after another, and it continues to, uh, you know, it continues. And then sometimes it could even get a little violent, maybe raising of hands, raising of tempers, terrible messages and threats. I can say that continuous disagreements leading to conflict could be a great indication that it is not well in the relationship. If it is constantly happening every time you meet or spend time with each other, it may be a good idea to reconsider and realize that you may be in a wrong relationship. This is of course before marriage. It could be that maybe you are not compatible with each other. There are difference of opinions, or strong opinions. Maybe the other person is very opinionated, thinks too highly of him or herself. It could also be a sign of immaturity. 
So maybe then it may be a good idea to move out of that relationship whenever it's possible. But if you still think, no, 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 things could change and you enter into marriage, then let me caution you, be ready to face the consequences. Well, in marriage, if the scene and the feel at home uh, is constant disagreements that lead to conflict and then continuous conflicts, then that is not a happy place to be in also. If conflict is handled well and maturely, it can help to bring change and help us grow up. We can learn from the mistakes we make. Communication with each other is a very important ingredient in a healthy relationship and marriage. When people in a relationship are mature in their thinking. So take time to think about what you may, what may be wrong and find ways to deal with it in an adult way. It is possible to set the wrong right and move forward in a healthy way. Among believers, if there is con continuous conflict, it is definitely unhealthy. But it really should not be so if we want, if our goal is to live our lives as Jesus wants us to. The Bible says, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Often we find that when conflicts in relationships are not resolved or resolvable, it is because one of the persons is self-centered or wants his or her, no, her own way not willing to give, give up something to help bring peace into the situation. If there are continuous conflicts, find someone who can help in the situation to bring understanding and healing in the matter. So my dear friends, conflict is not always a sign that you are in a wrong relationship. It could mean that you need to grow up, be willing to adjust and meet halfway, be mature enough to realize that I have a problem or a problem attitude and be willing to seek help or forgiveness. And so bring healing and peace in the relationship. So thank you so much for those of you who said, 78% who said that conflict is not a sign um, that you are in a wrong relationship. Thank you, over to you, Millie. Thank you, Auntie, for this uh, wonderful words that you shared and I, um, think all of us have been blessed by Auntie's words. Uh, with this, let's move on to our second myth. And they lived happily ever after. That's what most of the fairy tale ends, right? The story ends with and they live happily ever after. It is said that anyone can have once upon a time or a happily ever after. But it's the journey between that makes the story worth telling. Happily ever after doesn't begin with once upon a time. It begins with now. So let us talk about our second myth. Love should be a fairy tale. And once again, we will see the poll launched on our screen. You will have two options, yes, no. It's already there. So I'll request all of us to once again share your opinion. What do you think about this myth? Should love be a fairy tale? So even as our friends are sharing their views, Sophia, what do you think? Do you, would you like to share your opinion on this? Opinion? Um... I would say no. <laughs> no, okay, great. Yes. All right, so we have our results. Love should be a fairy tale. 85% says no, and 15% says yes. Okay, thank you. Thanks, thank you to all of you for your wonderful response and your active participation. And to birth this myth, we have a um, wonderful friend of ours, a very talented, gifted person, singer, and um, we will hear from him what he has to say about this myth. I'm at a Disney, Disney, they tricked me, tricked me, had me wishing on the shooting star. 
Hey guys, I'm Zachary Ray, and I'm going to talk to you today about one of the myths um, that we're going to bust about relationships, um, and that is love should be a fairy tale. Have you guys heard that song? Um, I'm not at Disney, Disney. I think they tricked me, tricked me. Thought I was wishing on a shooting star. Um, <clears throat> so relationships, they are not made for TV scripts. That's true. They are lifelong commitments, um, which help you learn about yourself and your partner as you grow closer through life's ups and downs. It's not always ups or fairy tale things that happen in relationships. Um, unreali unrealistic expectations and overall assumptions can be the demise of any otherwise good relationship. Even though fairy tale relationships aren't reality, I'm happy to say that it is possible to have a thriving, passionate, and long-lasting relationship and marriage. Um, please take note, this doesn't just happen, but it is um, with the wonderful result of constant care, creativity, and devotion. Um, love is a choice. Um, it just doesn't happen. You choose to love people. You choose to love your partner and your <clears throat> your wife and um, people just in, in your um, relationships that you're in relationship with. Um, marriages are not meant to be disposable. Um, same with relationships, they're not meant to be disposable. Just because you aren't getting what you want, how you want it, and when you want it. Um, it's a commitment to yourself, your partner, and the relationship you're developing together. That's together, remember that. Although there isn't a one-size-fits-all um, for relationship success, there is a set of steps that need to take place for your relationship um, to grow and to have um, just surviving over over time, um, surviving through the ups, surviving through the downs. Um, <clears throat> one, learn to love and take care of yourself before entering into a relationship. Um, don't enter into a relationship super broken. Um, be broken by yourself. <laughs> Figure that out, that part out before you actually bring someone into that. Um, I think this is really important. Learn to love and take care of yourself before entering into a relationship. Um, desire to continue growing personally, emotionally, and spiritually. Choose your partner wisely, making sure you aren't making the choice based on something you are currently lacking. Um, be willing to walk away if it's not a good match um, before you get married. <laughs> before you get married. Um, ensure you and your partner have a similar vision for your life together. Make sure empathy is understood and valued by both of you guys. Um, choose to continue raising the bar and being your best in the relationship and challenge your partner to do the same. Um, I think we're so used to seeing um, just relationships on film, on movies. Um, <clears throat> I think that song, that, that recent song, Disney, I Met at Disney, um, is actually just, uh, it's, it's a funny thing because I think a lot of people when they enter into a relationship, they think, um, it's going to be this fairy tale and it's going to be a whole journey of just complete ups and exciting things. Um, it's not. Uh, relationships take work, they take sacrifice, um, and they take choosing to love the person every day. Um, so that's a myth. Um, relationships are not always fairy tales, um, but they can be incredible things um, if you work towards um, growing together. So that was Zachary Ray. Thank you, Zach, for sharing wonderful insight. And thank you for encouraging us this evening with those words of yours. And we all know Zach is, uh, has sent his video across the miles. And we really, really appreciate. And we want to thank you, Zach, with all of our hearts for doing this for us. So with this, let's move on to our third myth and the final myth for this evening. Do you believe in love at first sight? Yes, no. Okay, okay, let's see. According to a 2017 poll from a dating site, 61% women and 72% of men think that love at first sight is real. Okay, now that's a lot of people. So according to the dating site, 61% of women and 72% of men say that love uh, can happen. Okay, and does happen at first sight. So what do our friends think this evening? Love can happen at first sight. This is a myth, okay? And let's see um, what our friends are saying this morning. So again, we need to 
share our views. We need to select whatever you feel like, whatever you think. All right, so we have the results. 51% says no, and 49% of us says yes. Okay, so let's do a reality check on this. And we have um, beautiful Auntie Mina here with us this evening, and she will throw some light into this. So Auntie Mina, over to you. Thank you, Mini, and thank you for letting me share on this. Uh, I'm sure in life, you are bound to come across this question at least once. You know, I have heard it over and over. People asking me, was it love at first sight for you and Pastor Patrick? Uh, it may seem or sound real, but it is not always a reality. It is like seeing with your heart and feeling with your eyes. Don't think I made a mistake. I mean exactly that. You know, we usually see with our eyes and feel with our heart. But, you know, when we say love at first sight, it's sometimes we see with our heart, but feel with our eyes. Uh, we all agree that love is a verb. That means it is an action word. It is a decision or a commitment to an action. Do you agree with me? If so, then how can you make a decision without knowing a person? To answer this question in the affirmative, we have to see the biblical definition of love. First John 4 verse 8 says, God is love. That is, God is the author of love. God is the source of love. God is the fountain of love. God is the chief establisher of love. God is the wellspring of love. God is a perfecter of love, and God is the finisher of love. That we as humans are even able to love is only the natural result of whose image and likeness we were created in. Therefore, what happens at so-called love at first sight is actually this. When we see the person, we instantly realize that we have been called by God to love that person who we are seeing with our eyes for the first, for the very first time. Uh, when I laid my eyes on my husband of 32 years, you no, know, that is exactly what happened. It was in June, 1986. And I'm sure at that time, some of you were not even born. I realized with God's help, I could love this man for the rest of my life. So I just want to share a secret with you before I close. With each passing day, my husband and I have said more I love yous to each other than we actually did in our courtship years. So young people, uh, you know, realize that God is there to help us to make that decision. But definitely, you know, when you see a person, your heart does feel that maybe this is the person God has, and then you feel that peace, you will know that that is the person God has brought into your life. God bless you. Thank you, Auntie. So I would like to thank Auntie Sheila, Auntie Mina, and Zachary Ray for, their, uh, for encouraging us this evening, and all our friends for your participation as well. Over to Rebecca. Wow. Those were some powerful revelations. Um, Love may be blind, but Soul Live is definitely an eye opener. Thank you, Minnie, for leading us in that uh, very interesting segment. I can't wait for what's next. Well, it's time for a talk with some of the most inspiring couples of our generation. Um, Barack and Michelle Obama. Smarter than them. Virat and Anushka. Cooler than them. I give up. Well, these are simple people from ordinary walks of life, but living out an extraordinary love story. So sit back, stay tuned, don't go anywhere, because this next segment is going to teach you a lot about love.
Socrates once said, by all means, marry. If you get a good spouse, you'll be happy. If you get a bad one, you'll turn into a philosopher. Good evening, Soul Life. Welcome to our Valentine's special called the Love Potion. Today, we have with us three amazing couples. Couples who are going to share their love stories with us. And we're hoping by the end of this interview, you'll get a fresh take to what this four letter word love is all about. Let me introduce to you our panelist. We have with us today, Samantha and her Valentine Mayur. We also have brother Cyrus and his Valentine, sister Cabrini. And we have with us brother Shaji and his wife, sister Bina. So let us begin by asking you a little bit about yourselves. Tell us, how long have you been married for? It's been one year, five days for us. Very long. <laughs> Jokes apart, 21 years. We just completed 25 years. Wow, that's incredible. One year, 21 years, and 25 years. Also, I'm sure everyone wants to know, how did you meet? And also tell us, who proposed? Uh, we met in church and Mayur proposed. We met through a common friend and uh, there's a saying which goes, man proposes and God disposes. But in our case, it was God who proposed it and it's definitely been his plan all the way. Our words as a perfect uh, arranged marriage. Okay, now we're going to get into a fun segment. It's a simple game and we're calling it Tell Us Who. So all you need to do is, if you feel the question applies to your spouse, you point a finger at them. But if you think the answer applies to you, be honest and point at yourself. So are you ready for this game? Yes. Well, let me ask you a few exciting questions. The first one being, who is more forgetful? Okay, who is the better cook? Always. <laughs> wow, I hope you notice we are definitely breaking some stereotypes out here. My third question is, who is the shopaholic? Okay, who takes more time to get dressed? This is getting more interesting. <laughs> who spends more time over the phone? We gotta be honest here. No, no, no. <laughs> I hope there's no fight on Valentine's Day. <laughs> Who tends to lose their temper faster? And finally, who says sorry first? Some couples are not sure. <laughs> Thank you for those very spontaneous answers. You know, friends, they say that the couples that are meant to be go through everything that's designed to tear them apart and yet emerge out stronger. So I really want to know from each one of you, has there been a moment in your life or in your relationship where you felt like giving up? And what is it that kept you all going? Um. Yeah, it, so as she said, it's, we completed 25 years and uh, we had uh, lots of up, ups and downs in our journey and uh, it wasn't very easy uh, 
to make up to 25 years. And uh, there were challenges. There were times that we felt like uh, enough is enough. Just give up. Um, all these thoughts have uh, come to our lives as well. And uh, um, But what kept us uh, going again uh, is there is a place to go back and uh, fix everything. Uh, that's where we found the hope for all our my age is Jesus. If we know the basic principle that we can go back to Jesus from where we started and to him that we can tell all our complaints, pour all our tears and everything and go to him and uh, he's a solution that we found many, many times. By our strength, we can never do that. And that is how we can say that we successfully celebrated 25 years and we are so uh, glad about that. Uh, definitely 21 years is a long time and uh, I cannot but say the truth that there definitely have been challenges and uh, I thank God though that um, I know I speak for myself and my husband that uh, we never came to the point where we thought that we wanted to be away from each other and uh, that bond which actually kept us so strong I think the fact that we both wanted to be together uh, no matter what uh, has seen us through every challenge. And uh, as Brother Shaji was also saying, the connect to Jesus, you know, because I, I recollect very clearly on the very first day of our marriage that we both had committed our marriage to Jesus. And that commitment, maybe during the course of this 21 years, we might have, you know, somewhere lost it. But Jesus was holding on. And I think that's what kept us together. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Wow, thank you for those beautiful answers. Isn't it amazing? Love is not trial and error. Love is staying committed even through the face of trials. And when you have Jesus by your side in the center of your relationship, you have nothing to worry about. Well, my last question to you is, what is the secret ingredient to your successful and happily married lives? Uh, when I think of this question, uh, the secret ingredient, uh, when we started, I think what defined us was set of core values or foundations that we wanted to you know, set ourselves apart with, that whenever we have ups and downs and we do have uh, moments of conflict, we can always hold strong to those values. And you know, we got about uh, two to three of them, and that's what just keeps us going strong, that whenever we you know, find ourselves in, you know, a set of challenges, that's what we hold strong to. I'll first give you all a lighter version. The, the best ingredient is uh, you take a little ginger, garlic, <laughs> some garam masala, with a dash of lime, mix it together with warm water, and have it every day early in the morning. <laughs> and I'm sure it'll keep your bowels running. Now for a serious answer, <laughs> well, we, we just thank God for his love in our lives. And I think love is the most important ingredient. And uh, I thank God that we are both grounded in God's word. And he has shown us and taught us very clearly that love is the supreme trait or characteristic that you should possess and you should share. Others all come in second and third, but love is the most supreme. So when there's love in any relationship, more so since we are talking about husband and wife, love definitely plays the most important role. In fact, in friendship, parents and children, whichever relationship you take, I would say love is the most important ingredient in that relationship. And I thank God that there is love and there will be love and it's because of the love that we receive from our Heavenly Father, even though we are imperfect in our ways, yet He chose us, He chooses us, and He loves us unconditionally. And I thank God because of that, we have learned to love our spouses. And uh, we have challenges. There are difficult times when we have to adjust and overlook. But it's because of love 
that you overlook those issues and you want to be with the person that you are with so i think love is the most important ingredient as as per me all of them are correctly answered and uh, cutting short of everything um we both would say um forgiveness just saying a a small word sorry that makes it everything that fix it everything sometimes we have strong fight and then we come together and just say sorry to each other and that is just like you know after a hard work of hard work just having a cup of tea or coffee that makes it everything i'm sure you would say the same thing right yes <laughs> am i not and, am i forcing you <laughs> no no of course yeah it was uh, in the beginning for me it was very hard to say sorry to him for anything we used to have a lot of adjustment issues because of course it was a arranged marriage and uh, we had a lot of problem and uh, when i came to calcutta in 95 and i didn't know any languages or and he was so busy with the mission and all that so definitely i had a lot of challenges so and it was very difficult for me to say sorry and uh, of course i uh, after like uh, brother said it's love um, that's the most important and saying sorry and all that like that's very true thank you thank you for being so real and transparent with us someone rightly said love starts at forever and ends at never we wish you three infinite love and happiness in the future and many more successful valentines day to come thank you so life for giving us your time we hope you enjoy the rest of your evening stay blessed and stay loved Hey, good evening, everyone. Uh, hope you all are doing fine, and it's so good to be able to join you for this special uh, Valentine's Day video, uh, Valentine's Day special. And uh, it's it's great that we are able to gather this way. Well, uh, for those of you who are on this call, I recognize there are some of you who are single. but there are uh, many of you who are married as well but for both of you here are some pick up lines which you could use and uh, i'm sure you'll get some brownie points on it okay here we go here's the first one didn't we take a class together i could have sworn we had chemistry let that sink in for some time okay here's another one i'd never play hide and seek with you because someone like you is impossible to find um So here's here's some other ones, okay? Um, I came across one, and it looks like this. Your hand looks heavy. Can I hold it for you? Okay, it's a good one. Uh, another one. Here we go. Baby, you are so sweet. You could put Hershey's out of business. Well, uh, make a note, take notes. If you need the link to where I got these pickup lines from, I'll be happy to share them with you. uh but uh, yeah it's so it's so glad to be able to uh, you know just uh, be here and thank you everyone for busting those myths and even for all of the couples who shared uh, you know from their life and there's nothing that can be compared to you know just uh, what was uh, what what experience can bring to any uh, relationship and uh, i i want you to just uh, go ahead and and take another poll and the questions are going to come up here's the first question okay uh do you want to know the secret formula for love well i'm sure uh we all are actively participating in that and yes of course we all want to know the secret formula for love uh here's here's another question if there was a love potion which would make love better 
would you buy it or would you get it? Wow, some people are really doing a lot of thinking. The answers are going up and down. Yes. Well, the answer is 60% said yes, 40% said no. And you know, because we all desire for something that's better, something that we could hope would make our relationship better, right? Um, and uh, something that we could wish could make people fall in love. Um, and, uh, you know, a, a Shakespearean uh, play entitled A Midsummer Night's Dream uses something called a love potion. Uh, where, where, uh, which can make people fall in love. Even in the movie Harry Potter, there is the use of a certain love potion called Amortensia. And there are several references to uh, love potions in history and culture. And there are basically two ways that these love potions work. Number one, you consume it yourself in the presence of the person that uh, you want to love. Or the second way is you make the person who you want to love consume that love potion. And some of you are saying, wow. And some of you are saying, how? Uh, well, here are some interesting facts. Love potions are not fictional. They are real. They date back to ancient Greece where these were real things, okay? Uh, they were associated with magic and there were weird ingredients used to make these love potions. Um, how many of you have ever heard the expression when you're trying to convey that you have worked really hard? You say, I've put my bl blood, sweat and tears into this project or into this work. We all have done that, right? At some point of time. Yeah. Do you know that this phrase comes actually from the making of love potions where it was believed that you need to put real blood, real sweat and real tears in that portion to make the other person love you. Weird, right? But here's something that we all need to know. I must also say that wherever we have it from, whether in history or in culture, whenever love portions were used, it always ended up making things more worse. And that's because the way love really is, uh, you know, you cannot manipulate, you cannot manipulate love for better or for worse. Uh, nobody can make anyone love anyone or anything. And the efforts in this direction end up being temporary. So is there really a magical portion that we can use and it will not mess up love? Well, I want to tell you about one such portion Excuse me. I want to tell you about one such potion and I want us to look at it. Uh, it's different from the other magical uh, love potions and it's different in this way. Number one, it's not magical. Number two, it doesn't have any weird or rare ingredients as such. Uh, number three, it is easily available. Number four, it always seems to work. And number five, it produces love, not lust or infatuation. And these principles, uh, these, uh, this love portion is in the form of, uh, you know, three, uh, three principles that I want you to uh, focus on. And here are those principles. The first one is love God. Love God. Matthew 19, 6 says, so they too are no longer uh, so, so they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. You see, if God is the one who joins together, God must be the center. He's like the glue, right? And so the first principle of this very important love portion is to keep God in the center of your relationship. Running every, uh, running every thought, every reaction, and I love how uh, Brother Shaji and Sister Bina communicated that, you know, forgiveness is something that will not come naturally. But if God is in the center of your relationship, forgiveness will be one of the important practices 
in a relationship. Keeping God in the center of a relationship is key. The first principle is loving God. The second principle is loving your partner. And the verse that I want to use here is Genesis 1.27. It says, so God created mankind in, in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, both. He created them. And the important part is, you know, we can end up being very selfish. And we are selfish by nature. But we got to recognize the image of God. The fact that God has created the other person just like him. And that becomes the crux of how we treat someone else, of how we treat another person. You know, we, we, we hear of so many relationships where there, is, uh, where there is abuse, where there is violence, where, uh, you know, there, 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 there are different things that are happening where one person is always subjugating another and, and you know, wanting power over the other. Well, I want to tell you this. If you will learn how to love your spouse, learn how to love your partner, you're going to see uh, God's image in that person and you're going to treat them based on that. You're not going to look at them as a commodity. You know, uh, you're not going to look at them as, as a tool to be used to get to something or, or to just be pleased. And uh, I want to request each one of you, if you're considering a relationship or if you are in one, and then for those of you who are married, begin to ask God to help you to look at your partner as someone who is created in the image and the likeness of God. And that's going to change the way you look at your relationship. That's the second principle of this love portion. The third principle of this love portion is love yourself. In Luke 10, 27, Jesus gives a young person a very important command. He says, love your neighbor as yourself. So, uh, dear friends, I, I want you to know this. You can only love someone else as much as you love yourself. Uh, many of us take for granted the fact of self-care and self-love. You know, it's very idealistic to say that you would jump off a cliff or you would, you know, uh, swim the deepest ocean. And, and uh, you know, we keep on with those promises where... Uh, there are so many things about laying down one's life. Yes, that's important. That's the intention, but not at the point of harming and uh, looking down upon yourself, belittling yourself. Remember this, you know, many people are stuck and trapped in abusive relationships because they haven't learned to love themselves. Many of us step into relationships because we expect to get love from someone else that same love that we couldn't give ourselves. And so I want to set that precedent right here. You know, no one else can love you for yourself. You know, make that a point in your relationship. The minute you begin to love yourself, you begin to love others. The minute you begin to love God, you love others the way you love them. And so this evening, let's walk away with this encouragement. The love portion that we need to hold on to. And if we want to see love getting better in our life, our relationships getting better, let's start by loving God. Let's start by loving our partner. And let's start by loving ourselves the way God wants us to love ourselves. God bless you. Over to Pastor Jacob. Good. Uh, good evening, friends. Uh, I hope you can see me. Just I'll make sure. Uh, yeah. Good evening. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Philip, for bringing a beautiful conclusion to this wonderful evening of loving God, loving your partner, loving yourself. And I want to just take this uh, few moments to just to, before I conclude in prayer, uh, in just a moment, I want to thank all of you who joined in. Uh, we have, I mean, uh, we had over this last one hour, at least 70 to 80 people log in from different parts of this city, some from outside. So especially if you are for joining from outside, we want to really thank you for making uh, time to be here uh, for this very special Valentine's event. So live every year, we try our best to make a special event. And uh, we are glad that we could do it online this time. And uh, we thank you for your time. 
but want to especially thank everyone who participated uh, the from the mythbusters uh, sister meena shilaka zack then we had the the interviews uh, so each of them who shared but i want to especially thank the core team who worked behind the scenes uh, so if wherever you are logged in put your hands together appreciate them as they men- as i mentioned their names i want to thank rebecca uh, mini uh, sophia and timothy who worked together as one team um, along with backup from our technical team uh, the the so design team and the trek group leaders and want to thank nina uh, who participated and was guiding in all of the uh, details uh, so put your hands together and please appreciate all of them for all the hard work uh, i know making videos uh, connecting with people uh, there's so much involved uh, so uh, thank you for taking the time this week to make I mean last couple of weeks preparing towards this event um, and as we wrap up in a moment as i pray uh, each of us come from different backgrounds each of us have different situations uh, we are battling with and as i pray um, i don't know where you are right now uh, some of you are married uh, but you may be unhappy uh, some of you are not married you're single you're unhappy uh, some of you are happy regardless of whichever status you are but at the bottom of your hearts if there is a deep cry and you're saying god uh, i need your touch uh i need to experience your love first before i can truly love a person around me uh so as i close in prayer i want us to close our eyes just for a moment and if there are some of you maybe one of you maybe just two people on this uh on this um, zoom call or where you're logged in right now and you are experiencing a heartache a breakup you're going through a difficult time in your personal life i uh, just want to let you know god is concerned for you also god wants to heal you god wants to restore you god wants to let you know that you are precious to him and uh, there is something beautiful he wants to do with your life so as i close in prayer um, regardless of where you are what's your status i want to you to bring your life to god uh, realize that he is our original valentine he is the one in through jesus sent us his precious son so as i pray Uh, i want you to surrender yourself to him he knows your name he knows your dp he knows your statuses your stories he knows what's happening behind the scenes uh, and i'm praying that you will have a fresh encounter with jesus let's look to the lord in prayer father we thank you for your presence here thank you lord that you love everyone who has logged in on this call everyone who will ever listen to this uh, conversation we had this evening and lord you are you love them you are concerned for them uh, you came into this world you expressed your precious love in jesus because you love us and i pray this evening that each of us lord will experience you o oh lord will experience your love will experience who you are and i pray for each of my friends lord some who have shared their ha- concerns some of those who are going through difficult moments of breakup god whatever it is lord let them know that you are concerned for them you love them and you care for them we thank you lord for each of our friends so oh god who blogged in lord and i pray you will bless them bless their lives in 2021 will be a year where they experience the love of god they'll experience this love that pastor philip spoke about Lord we thank you master we pray for every married couple who's logged in on this call we pray you'll bless them and their marriage let them uh live lives which will honor you oh god we thank you master for your presence here in jesus name we pray amen amen thank you so much i uh, really appreciate all of you for joining in uh this evening i'm giving it back to the mcs uh thank you joydeep and rebecca for doing such a great job Uh, over to you for any closing comments and then uh, we can stay back uh, have uh, a conversation like a relaxed conversation god bless you thank you thank you pastor jacob for that powerful prayer and closing and thank you friends for joining us for our valentines day special this is me rebecca and joydeep signing off so have a great evening stay loved stay blessed
God bless. Have a great time. We are having a gala time out there. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Anuj. Yeah. Good to have you join in. Anuj, among you. Yes. <laughs> Good evening to all. Good evening, Bhasa. Anuj, not Anuj Bhage, but Anuj. Among. Among from Gurgaon, Delhi. Yes, Pastor. Good to have you. Thank you, Pastor. I'm just, we are just scanning the names, but good to have the big group gathered in Isaac Pushpa's place. Okay, thank you everybody. Goodbye. Bye, bye guys. Bye. Have a great evening. Hi Richard, good bye to bye. see you. Bye. Bye bye.